Namaskar. Good morning. How are you? Good. Nice to see you today. Um, as uh, we know, we are in the process of understanding the creativity in classical dance. Today we will look into how in the area of Kathak people work, people have worked, choreographers, individual artists and within, still within Kathak new creations have happened. Because as you see the alphabets ka, ka, ga, ga, remains the same in all dance styles. They do not change. But from that alphabet, how many creations continue happening throughout the history. And similarly, same way, we have the alphabet of dances, of vocabularies, of movement, and how each individual uses these permutation combinations is the process of creativity. So now let's look into this process of creativity in Kathak because Kathak is of the Khulla nature, open and the valorization of the elements of Upach, the dance form of Kathak has undoubtedly a creative DNA. The history of the content danced in all four garanas of Kathak is saturated with creativity. In the Jaipur Gharana, the Gurus are all time creating new bandishes, abstract Tripali, Lamjad, Tihai bandishes and also writing Vandanas and Kavits. In Lucknow Gharana, apart from Thumaris, some of which were written by Bindadin Maharaj, Lachhu Maharaj or Birju Maharaj, it was Gat, Tukras and Abhinaya, which became the canvas of constant creativity. In fact, the Bhav Batana technique is refined technique of instant creativity. The Banaras Gharana of Kathak was consciously created, created by Pandit Janki Prashadji. It was a completely new idea and out of the mold creation since it is characterized by exclusive use of natavari or the dance bowls which are different from tabla and the pakhavach bowls. Further, there were differences in the thart and tatkar and chakras are kept at a minimum but are often taken from both the right and the left hand sides with equal confidence. This is absolutely unique. The kathak of the Raigad gharana was an experiment of blending the best of all gharanas and creating a new. The fact that the Maharaja's passion of percussion and the beauty of nature that is a constant in the life and left landscape of Raigad resulted in some beautiful compositions that were inspired by nature like the Kadak Bijli Paran testifying to the elements of creativity and choreography always being part of the Kathak mindset. Therefore, whether it was the work of Maharaja Chakradar Singh, Shambhu Maharajji, Yachu Maharajji, Shundar Prashadji, Maya Rao Ji, Birju Maharajji, Rohini Bhate Ji or Kumutini Lakya Ji. In the early generation, all of them celebrated artistically the openness of Kathak to new creativity. The first decade after independence, as the process of institutionalization of the arts began, the shape that creativity took was in the nature of dance dramas. These were mostly on traditional, historical or literary themes. Then the Kathak Kendra came into being in 1964. Most of the early works of the Kendra too were around the similar ballets. But elsewhere there were new steerings. Rohini Bhate, settled in Pune, was researching music. Intricacies of Laya 
and how abstract dance in Kathak that is the Nritta with its vast range could become a highlight. Her work Avahan, a salutation to the five elements was on these lines. She inspired in her students a keenness for academically, musically and poetically strong work. Ahmedabad based Kumudini Lakhya began her mature journey in dance by challenging the basic nikas of Kathak from the left hand, suggesting Radha and the right suggesting Krishna Smayurpang by referring to it as pointing into the direction of the infinite around two axes, the upward axis and the sideward axis. She explored modern poetry and broke new grounds with Bhavani Prasad Mishra's Kathputli, a comment on the ferreted state of women. She formed a defund partnership with master musician Atul Desai and between 1967 to 95, she created over 50 pieces of original choreography in Kathak to his music, helped undoubtedly by the fact that there were a host of well-trained students that she could call upon including Ishira Parikh, Maulik Shah, Daksha Sheth, Vaishali Trivedi, Aditi Mangaldas and Prashan Shah. All of them were to make a name for themselves later as those pushing the boundaries of Kathak. Meanwhile, the institution realized that they need to carry a diverse audience and hence a diverse approach was necessary. For the Kathak Kendra, fortunately, the guidance of Keshav Kuthari, not just a brilliant administrator, he was to go on to become the secretary of Sangeet Natak Academy and take it to great heights, but a visionary himself and a well-trained Kathak dancer. It was a case of the right man at the right place at the right time. Thus, he became a critical element that contributed to the growth of the Kendra's profile and the national level dance festivals it organized annually. A discourse began round the Kathak form at this point, fired by Kumudini Lakhya's outspoken utterances when she challenged and cha changed the orthodox tradition is not orthodoxy. She said tradition is not orthodoxy and when criticized for pandering to western sensibilities in her many compositions till then including Duvida, Dabkar, Drishtikon, Yugal, Yatakim and others, she very sharply retorted, what is western? Eating at a table rather than squatting? One of her slightly later production, Saat Saat, worked for the husband and wife duo from Bangalore, Rajendra and Nirupama, looked at the past diduks arising from Saat Saat but also played on the combination of Rupak and Dhamar Tal and referred reference the number 7 in the Saptarishi, Saptasur and Satarangi rainbow. At that time, goaded by Keshav Kothari, Katha Kendra come up, came up with the abstract rather than representational composition in the works Laya Parikrama, Ratya Keli, Anamya, based on his own poem, poem Loheka Tukra and Sampadan, the last being based on the editing of film and making use of the Jorka Tukras in the fast forward and rewind modes of the play of the film. Guru Munna Shukla's ensemble work Anga Mukti captured deliberation of an individual who became a slave to technique before realizing the freedom needed to explore and rejoice in the potential of the technique. Shukla hoped to be free during the creation of this piece from the triple burden of Diksha that is initiation, Siksha that is learning and Pariksha the verification. The Kathak Mahotsavs introduced once again by Keshav Kothari from 1980 onwards became a forum 
for a pan-Indian display of Kathak. The works of Rohini Bhatte from Pune, Vijay Shankar from Kolkata and Kumudi Lakya from Ahmedabad began to be seen. In 1997, Daksha Shet presented a solo production, Four Seasons, done to Vivaldi's music composition of the same name. This was the first cocking of the snook in the establishment of Kathak. It was considered so bold that it was thrown into the realm of contemporary dance. Yet, the daring that Daksha had shown by using western music was a trend that caught on. Shovana Narayan used it for moonlight impressionism. Next came Aditi Mangaldas, Swagat, the letters to an unborn child. It was based on Oriana Felicis' novel, Letters to a Child Never Born. In 1994, Bhashwati Mishra presented Kaun Hai. This was based on a dancer's search for her own identity. It was followed the next year with Chetna Jalan's Ram Kathat Ram Kahani. This and another piece called Ardhashakti, Ardhasati about illusion people looking at the faint remnants of a democracy called Indian in which she used a variety of other arts like masks, mime, histrionics and western dance forms like jive and jazz with theatrical inputs by renowned theatre director Shamanan Jalan, her husband, vice chairman of Sangeetnat Academy and chairperson of the Katha Kendra and they drew a huge reaction with dancers like Sitara Devi dismissing it angrily as Nautanki. At this turn of the Millennium Festival in 2000, Kumudini Lakya students Daksha Shet presented works that combined dance, acrobatics, martial art and western music in a heady burst of astounding energy excerpts from a larger production, Sarpagati. She projected through this avant-garde excerpt the idea of using rhythmic sounds made by the body alone, claps and thumbs. This same idea was taken by another of Lakya's disciples, Aditi Mangaldas, in her exquisitely crafted and meticulously executed work, Infinite Journey. It had a noticeable mix of dazzle and dance to fit the bill for the Griviera Mr. India contest for which it was originally produced, proving that dancers have to be connected to the ground realities. But this turned out to be such a shocker, Kathak Mahotsav that soon after the Kathak Kendra reverted to the straight and narrow and started a tradition of festivals dedicated to the Gurus of yore, which to use the words of one of the dancers, became like turning the pages of an old photographic album as the selected dancers performed the sabak of the gurus. The gharana differences that had begun to be erased in these institutions reappeared and the distance between the Kathakendra and the brave new world that was witnessing globalization and the entry of foreign direct investment. So, what is new Katha? Will it replace the traditional solo format altogether in the years to come? To this, there may well be as many views as there are dancers. The fact of the matter is that it is only after mastering a technique that one can let go and still it speaks through the body. But the fact of the matter is that Increasingly, the market is unsupportive of traditional work alone unless it is by an artistic brand. So, people will stool, still go and line up for Birju Maharaj, but few will go for younger names. Yet, the young name grows into the brand eventually. So, admittedly, it is a catch-22 situation and therefore, the government platforms and corporate and market spaces have to continue to support the arts simultaneously. The many festivals organized by the state and central governments present a fine forum to showcase new work 
even in the hatke mood even at the essence of classicism the khajurao dance festival pandit durkalal's disciple sarmishtha mukherjee's troupe presented a specially choreographed work she dealing with the tales of ancient five goddesses yaditi vak aranyayi ratri and usha its uniqueness was that it was two music compa- composed by advaita band additionally rather than the poetic text for each goddess for abhinay the choreographer sharmishtha used abstractions on the same platform nirupama and rajendra extending the boundaries of kathak with innovative numbers like tadha choreographed by kumudini lakhya tadha the two mnemonic syllables to which they performed with lilting music which had fusion of afro asian percussion touch of jazz and classical indian was loved by the audience not just as khajuraho but is a hot favorite wherever they perform it prerna shimali's water was creativity with a difference at no point did she leave the classical vocabulary of kathak but from the thought to the tatkar she effectively wove in the theme of water in her work on tagore's poetry she showed the same kind of creativity subtle and very comforting that she had done when she used padmakar's poetry some 20 years ago and used the palm of the hand to depict radha for the palm is fairer and lighter in color than the back of the hand which she used to depict krishna in very skillful yet discreet movements in fact the analogy was so smooth and subtle that it could easily have slipped past unrecognized in the case of the tagore interpretation she changed the abhisar to become the nayak's abhisar that the nayika imagined prajna's capacity for abstraction and subtlety are her strength finally in this module it is time to discuss the works of aditi mangaldas in greater and focused detail today apart from akram khan of the uk it is aditi who has been making waves internationally like akram aditi too journeys across boundaries to create uncompromising artistic narratives aditi's work have been referred to elsewhere and in the other past in this course many a times in here today we will study six of her most recent works created under the banner of her art foundation drashtikon and presented by the aditi mangaldas dance company when people talk about aditi they recall first that her training was with kumudini lakhya as if that explains why she subscribes to this creative vision of kathak but equally important it is to remember that she is as much birju maharaj's disciple so it is a double dose of creativity that she got from her teachers her guru bahan daksha shet also trained with both these but while she is in the vanguard of dance it is not just kathak it is a contemporary language of dance that she incorporates other dance and movement forms that she formally learned including mayurbhan chau kalari payatu the martial art of kerala and the aerial technique of malkham which she has been practicing since 1996 in her website she announces her keenness to work with performing artists with backgrounds in dance sports athletics gymnastics martial arts or circus arts no other indian classical artist wants to get out of the comfort zone and to work with collaborators from such varied fields and some fields that would struggle to be described as arts thus it was for her creative and experimental explorations in the field of dance and not kathak that daksha received the sangeet natak academy in 2010 in contrast when aditi was given the same award in the same category 
she refused to accept it saying that she only knew one language and that was Kathak. Thus, she would only accept the award on ethical grounds if it was given to her in the category of Kathak. In 2006, Aditi created Uncharted Seas from a J. Krishnamurti quotation. Aditi took her inspiration and she says, we look for fixed points but there are none either in ourselves nor outside in universe. To live without these fixed points is our challenge. And to live without fixed points compels the creation of at least a fixed point. Would that be God, truth, beauty, love or freedom? This search for this elusive element is captured in uncharted seas with music by Shubha Mudgal and Anish Pradhan. In 2009, <clears throat> Aditi came up with Now Is, a simultaneous dialogue between the three art forms of painting, music and dance that explores the timeless present and is built around the central question, can we leave creativity, leave in the now, the present carries within it the burdens of the past as well as the fantasies of the future. Can these links be broken so that a timeless moment is born? The philosopher J. Krishnamurti held out an invitation of living in time, timelessly without the past and the future mingling on the moment now is explores the theme in the now is all time and to understand the now is to be free of time in choreography in this choreography aditi consciously attempted not to interpret imbue any meaning and just let it be thereby living up to the chinese saying Use the body like a flute, lift it up to the wind and it plays by itself. This is harder that can be imagined for it was a very conscious treatment of the unconscious. A tremendous effort to be effortless that went into this choreography for three. <coughs> Aditi used projections of the reduced painting of Sigward Sproth's Reminiscent of Japanese ink painting, a reviewer described the work such as a seamless merging of the classical and the contemporary language of dance, which is which? Difficult to say. A painting is sung, an alap is danced, a song is painted and brush strokes embody the vibrations. The infinite, the fin finite, moments of breakage of memory of belonging, of severance, a river, a color, texture, silence and sound, motion, stillness, waves, the dancers and the dance are one. Four months later, Aditi came up with Immersed, a solo about the theme of Krishna, the most beloved and frequently represented God. Is Krishna fixed in an image, gender and class? Who created him? Is that imagination greater than Krishna or is he as the choreographers imagines like a river, like life itself? Again, Shobha Mudgal and Anish Pradhan did the music and the Italian light designer Fabiana Piscioli did the lights for Immersed just as she had done the lights for Now Is. It was apparent that the rule Aditi had been following is to explore the unfamiliar, collaborate with the best, avoid compromises and say what needs to be said with absolute integrity. In 2013, Aditi created Within, a performance in two parts in which the first part noted a contemporary dance based on Kathak and the second part entirely on classical Kathak titled Unwrapped. Unwrapped was difficult piece for her to make 
because it was dance no doubt, but the run of its choreography compel a deep look inwards about who you were. That can be quite discerning as strong emotions like love and hate had to be faced up to. What is remarkable about within is the range of poetic and musical inputs which include Ajra Din Duba, an original composition and lyrics by Pandit Kumar Gandharva, Laldel's Vak wrapped up in yourself, translated from Kashmiri by Ranjit Hoskote and Bhakti songs, Is Ghat Antar by Kabir and Yarko Hamne by Hazrat Shaniyas. The overall music compassion for Unwrapped was by Mahesh Vinayakram and for noted by Ish Sherawat and Diffused Beats with the lights once again designed by Fabiana Visioli. Two of Aditi's most recent choreographies were both solos, Seeking the Beyond and Widening Circles. Seeking the Beyond is about our constant search through life, a search for what lies beyond and the realms of the known. What lies beyond what our mind can perceive? What lies hidden in the deep recesses of our heart? This has been portrayed through compositions of three poets, philosophers, Mira, Amir Khusru and Kabir. In this choreography, Mangaldas traversed the space between temporality and transcendence, invoking the ghosts of Bhakti and Sufi poets past straddling the line between contemporary and classical Kathak in the process and as she intones, I seek the beloved, she lets the words hang softly in the air as she sits still on the stage, a picture of perfect repose, the dancer and the dance merging. Widening circles weaves a rich jacket of multilingual poetry to the state of a simple truth that in the universe everything is linked, from tiny atoms to vast galaxies, from the simplest to the most complex, from the mighty to the minute. Everything is linked and is connected and within this circles of life is the beautiful flowering of the lotus that is I. In all these works there is a philosophy at play, a philosophy where the dancer allows the joy of the music to flow through her body that is in dance even in its stillness. The choreographies seem to be steaming from the same tree of thought, the search for meaning or meanings as the approach is about pluralities. In the many paths one finds a non-linear representation of the individual and his place in the cosmos. A choreographer is a poet, a poet of movement. Eventually, the highest form of art is poetry. The one who reaches it is called a sage, the one who has the insight. The choreographer uses a tangible and corporeal medium of the body to communicate insight as Aditi has done in these works. Echoes is the first time that Aditi Mangaldas has choreographed a work outside the Aditi Mangaldas dance company that is Rashikon or made a work for someone who isn't her student. Akash Odhidra is Kathak's fastest rising international star. Like Mangaldas Odhidra, a Gujarati trained with Kumudini Lakya and Nilima Devi. Both are trailblazers in giving classical Kathak a contemporary spin. Bells or gungrus have been a constant companion of Indian dancers and especially Kathak dancers who often dance wearing as many as 200 on each ankle. They are noted in a rope that is tied and in, the, in this piece the ropes of gungrus lie on the floor creating visual designs. They hang vertically segmenting space and then Odedra swings them widely like Urumi or like 
nunchaku. All of these could well result in a backlash from traditionalists if they see it merely as provocation and fail to understand the question implied are the bells mute ritualistic objects or are they about life and vivacity. The 35 minute piece ended with the gungurus tied on Odedra's feet. Odedra justifies this work by saying that Kathak needs to evolve to contemporary times. Kathak no longer exists in temples and in the courts. There is no longer a king sitting in the audience, says Odetra, who was awarded the prestigious Bessie Dance Prize in 2014 for outstanding performance of his work in Get on the Good Food. It has moved to contemporary stage. The aim is to take what already exists and make it more relevant, which is in this moment, says Akash. Mangaldas, on the other hand, sees the essence of Gungurus as going beyond the object that she cherishes deeply. It has been a constant companion, she says, and even it has certain connection, you have to let it go, just like you need to let superstitions go. Gungurus are the resonance of your movement and your life. Symbolic of the molecules of the DNA which initially surround the dancer and ultimately consume him. Mangaldas is excited about how Echos has given her the opportunity to showcase her work far and wide and also break the glass ceiling in a way that Indian dance is projected and viewed by a non-Indian and South Asian audience. It is evident that both dancer and the choreographer refuse to reside in a pond. Journeying over the uncharted seas is what keeps both of them going. And as I am talking, uh, Akash and Sayukta Sinha are today performing a new work in London. And it seems that this work is creating ripples already before it is performed. And as the word of Kathak today surely is an uncharted ocean for those who are traversing it with hair blowing back in the sultry sprays, they take on bravely the waves with the firmness of hand and the stillness of determination. Just as the experiments of the earlier generations opened the floodgates for the likes of Mangaldas, she in turn has inspired so many others. Their stories will be recounted. And maybe some point your stories will become part of such courses for people and students to be inspired and to be creative. Thank you. Namaste. Thank mm -hmm. you.